the the one thing in business, and it could be to Matthew's flip, or it could be to Denise's business or mine or whoever, is that how do you outcompete your competition? We all have people that we compete against. They all do different stuff. Everyone has their own different strengths. And actually it's really important to almost know that so that you can work around it. So one of the questions that I asked in the NEPIC strategy session last week was, why are your competitors better? It's a really important question. Why are your competitors better than you? Because what we then go on to do, and I've done this, we'd actually did this in the two business strategy sessions, which is chapter five. Um, actually, no, it was chapter four, tell a lie. Um, over the last few weeks, well, the way to do it is that you do something called a positioning exercise, which if I find the page, and basically what you're looking to do is you plot on two axes, the strengths of, actually it's in the marketing, where are we at? I just like to show you the actual page to show people what's in the course. So page 90. And what we do is that we plot you, but also your entire sect and your competitors against one another, against different axes. And you can do this multiple times. And it could be that you pick, I don't know, price and quality. And if you take, I'm going to pick an early one, watches. Price against quality, what's expensive but really high quality. Rolex, what's high quality but lower price? I'm gonna go Casio. It just, it's a different type of watch. And again, if you're gonna launch a new digital Casio type watch, you position it differently to Rolex. But what's also interesting is that if we were to change these two axes and we were gonna say, um, so you're gonna launch a new digital watch and you're looking to position it in the market, if it's a dig, um, like a, a Casio type watch, you can't compete in terms of quality or brand or perception against Rolex, but that's not your market. What you would then look to do is look at your customer, what's important to them. One might be quality in terms of build quality. And then the other one could be suitability for outdoor adventures. Uh, I'm gonna say, I don't know, waterproof or whatever. But the idea is that if you're this new brand that wants to launch this new watch into this sector, when you understand your strengths, you don't compete on the same playing field as Rolex for that thing. You pick your own niche. So actually, if you're the best, most waterproof, high quality adventure watch there is, that's how you promote yourself. But if you're not, and it, it, it's it really just finding your, your niche. Like I was on the cost one, it might be that you actually have a high, vol high quality, low cost watch for new markets. And I'm trying to think maybe Swatch back in the day could have maybe done that. Um, well, I was saying that I know Swatches are quite expensive, but you get my point is almost, there's always a niche for different things. So it's really important to kind of go through this exercise and look at your competitors to see who does what. But what's really interesting and people often miss is that when you've actually kind of found your strength, you can play hard on that. So for me, it's making business education accessible is the mission. And what I try and outcompete people on is the quality and the interactivity of the, the live streams, the questions, the textbook, etc. But the other thing as well is that arguably there are hundreds of books and stuff out there and arguably people could copy the content, but what they can't copy is the execution. And it's that execution in terms of, you know, the packaging, the interactivity, the ability to answer questions, the ability to react quickly. So for instance, if I was to plot myself against universities, University is great and they obviously have a lot of strengths and very credible and trusted supply chain and stuff. But to launch a new university course to then give real life case studies for something that happened yesterday is very difficult. And also because they have to teach an audience that work in businesses all around the world at different sizes, they have to teach a generalist business course for that reason. And that's true with any MBA or whichever. I purposely go hard on small businesses because actually the challenges that they face are different and the challenges that people face who work within them are different. So I'm really kind of honing down on the niche, but actually, yeah, just the ability to find what you do. And a great example, again, which anyone can do is customer service. 
I've had some really bad examples recently of people that you're talking to just don't return emails, don't return the phone, etc. So even if the technical quality and their price is what you expect, you can outcompete people on customer service and it costs nothing. And that's where it's really important when you're actually looking at your business and what you do. You could make a coffee shop which competes with Costa. And, you know, just knowing your customers' names and making it a friendly place for dogs or kids or whatever can be a USP and that that's the best way to outcompete your competitors. But also you can make it uniquely you that likewise, you know, that can be your USP. So hopefully that makes sense. I've seen the, the chat go crazy. So I'm just trying to catch up.